Are we live? We are live, baby. We are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Friday's Corner Bar. Happy Friday. Happy, Happy Easter. Friday. Happy Good Friday. It's, um, it was a nice day out there. A little chilly, obviously, but um, at least it was sunny, not rainy. Um, hopefully, everybody's having a good week. I had a good week. Um, I'd like to wish uh, Donna um, Shoei a happy birthday. I think she turns 39 now. I think that's how old you are, Donna, right? Um, <laughs> I have no idea. But anyway, happy birthday. Hopefully you're having a happy great birthday. weekend. Um, we're excited. We have a new guest uh, joining us tonight. We have um, Melissa, and um, she and her husband started a company called Hail Bone Broth. Let me bring her on screen okay. so she can say hello to everyone. <laughs> so welcome, Melissa. Um, you and your husband, Chris, started this company how long ago? Uh, it's a little under three years ago. It kind of became official. Okay, good. You want to kind of talk about um, what you guys do and, and the bone broth? We've been fans of bone broth for a number of years. Um, in the past, we've always made it. I've bought it from a friend of mine a couple of times, but it's just got such great benefits, um, especially with immunity and detoxification. And um, what I find um, is I do a lot of, you know, kind of crazy workouts. And I find that when I consume bone broth within a day, I can feel my joints are so much better. And I just, a lot of the soreness goes away, especially in my left shoulder. Um, but it, it just, it's, it's kind of like an, a magical elixir, I guess you could say. So, um, Turn it over to Melissa. So yeah, well, you you just said it. It's kind of that um, not only magical elixir. It's super ancient, and bone broth has been around for centuries. So whether they cooked with it back in the you know the day for uh, like our ancestors, whether it was an Asian culture, Italian culture, where I kind of fall in, where my grandmother always cooked like all the stocks and broths with the full you know chicken or all the bones in the sauce or the gravy, depending on what part of Italy you were from. So my husband was a little foreign to that. And when he was kind of similar, like struggling with some joint issues, some gut issues, kind of like white knuckling food, I'm such a foodie that I'm like, no, you can't not like food. Let's like embrace food as it can heal you. Exactly. And I just started, you know, tinkering with that. And I think, you know, truly it became super trendy from that ancient elixir, that magical elixir to um, more so mainstream where the people like Tom Brady are toting it as like, amino acids, great for muscle recovery, um, the celebrities for that collagen boost. And so there's such a buzz around, but I found that I wanted to, and you'll see in this spiel later, like I wanted to keep it local. I wanted to know where the product came from. I wanted to be able to source quality. So I just started making it. And then it just, once we hit, uh, once my husband felt those benefits that you were feeling in like your shoulder after your workout, he said to me, like, you've got to do something with this. So we brought it to farmer's markets and we've stuck in that community. We've grown and we have such a great, we call it the Hail Tribe. And now we, COVID, our pivot became where we were delivering. And that's why tonight, I think it will be cool that I'll be able to share the immunity booster, which like took off during COVID, um, but also to the cocktails that we'll be uh, creating tonight. It's a great hangover. Um, <laughs> oh, I mean, it fits your wheelhouse perfectly. Exactly. So speaking of cocktails, I'm going to turn it over to Shannon and she's going to get started on, um, I don't remember what she's yes. making first, but anyway, Shannon. So I'm going to make a chocolate martini so we can enjoy our martinis while uh, uh, Melissa uh, uh, prepares her uh, uh, immunity boosting chicken soup. So I'm just going to hide you for a minute there, Melissa, and then we'll, we'll uh, bring you right back on. Okay, so let me show you the recipe. So the first cocktail I'm gonna make is a chocolate martini. So all of the cocktails that I selected for tonight are, are based on Easter candy. I thought that would be fun. So I would say these are like a one and done kind of uh, cocktail. I don't think you wanna drink them all night. So the chocolate martini is we're going to do an ounce and a half of vodka and I use the kettle one vodka and then it is extra dry vermouth so it is one ounce of vermouth and then it's one ounce of cream de cocoa now you're supposed to use the dutch white cream de cocoa and i did not have that i have my favorite which is this 
Tempest Fugit. So it's going to be a little, it's not going to be white, white, like uh, um, a chocolate martini should be. But before I start with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this, we're going to garnish the glass. This glass takes a, a, a powdered uh, cocoa garnish. So you can see I have uh, the powdered dark, uh, dark chocolate cocoa. And Typically, when you rim a glass, like if you're gonna uh, rim it with, like if you're gonna rim it with salt uh, or something with citrus, you use the citrus to actually rim, you know, get wet, wet the glass so you can have whatever dry ingredients stick on that. Since this drink does not have citrus in it, what I like to do is I've just poured a little bit of the cream de cocoa on a plate, and I'm going to um, just take the glass and spin it around in that cream de cocoa. And then I'm going to, and this, this makes a mess. This stuff is really powdery. So luckily Mike's cleaning up tonight. So you can see we have a nice little uh, powdered room. Now these glasses were in the freezer, so they were chilled before I started doing this. Because again, most of the time when I chill a glass, I put ice and water in that glass and the problem with that is, is that that is going to make a mess when you try to rim a glass. The And one thing to keep in mind is that, um, again, there's the, uh, the rim on the glass. One thing to keep in mind when rimming the glass is, you know, really water, things are not going to adhere to water. It's not sticky enough. So, uh, so here are my two chilled rimmed cocktail glasses. So you want to prepare that before you uh, start making your cocktail. Again, this is, uh, this cocktail could be stirred, but I'm going to, uh, uh, because there is, it is a liquor, liquor cocktail, but I'm just going to give it a quick shake just because I want to give it a little more chill. So I'm going to start with, I'll start with the cream de cocoa. So we're going to do, let me use this measure. We're going to do one ounce of the cream de cocoa. We will do one ounce of the extra dry vermouth. And now this vermouth is, you know, this is a white vermouth. It's not a red vermouth. So we're gonna do one ounce of, oh shoot, now I'm making two. I almost forgot Mike. Sorry. Wouldn't be the first time. You can stand over here so people can see you, honey. The cameras are on. They wanna see you. And then we'll do the uh, three ounces of the vodka since we're making two. So did you have a good week, babe? I did. I had a really good week. The weather's starting to get nice, which is which is good. Always. Yeah, I was able to get a couple of outside workouts in, which was nice. And, uh, I have to use my pull-up bar a couple of days. I put a pull-up bar in last week out in the backyard. Okay, I'm just going to fill my shaker with ice. So how was your week, Sam? My week is good. Anything special happening? Anything special? Every day. Every day is special. Wow. Because I'm there for you. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a little help, but Shannon got a promotion um, to senior vice president. She is one of three um, senior executives at that level for about a half a billion dollar company. So I'm really proud of her. She's going to be uh, continuing to manage um, an organization um, in Chicago and then one down in Texas, as well as continuing with her uh, her job in Middleborough, Mass. So. Congratulations, it was well deserved, long overdue, and uh, we're both very happy for her. Or, um, Thank you. Very I'm much. very happy for you. Thank you. And so. here is your chocolate martini. So there you yeah. go, baby. I'll put my angels in the finish dry away. I know Stephen would love that. Cheers. Cheers. Love, love you. you. And again, congratulations. Thank you. That is that is tasty, but like I said, I think it's definitely a one and done. definitely a one and done. Mm. 
So I'm gonna bring Melissa back on. Let me just. Uh, and we're gonna enjoy our cocktails while Melissa makes some soup. Wait, hey, uh, there you go. There you are. Oh my gosh, okay. I love that news. Perfect to cheers that martini with. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Great news. So we're gonna we're gonna hide ourselves so you won't be able to hear us. So whenever we'll but we'll be watching. So whenever you're ready. All right. Well, I'm so excited to be here. Um, welcome to my kitchen. Like they said, my name is Melissa Smith. Uh, my husband and I started the Hale Life, which is the Hale Bone Broth um, kind of lifestyle brand that we created. And it's funny because we're talking about Easter candy. We're rolling into um, a holiday weekend, lots of indulging. That chocolate martini looked delicious. Uh, and one of the things that I think was a staple and as we came up with our, our branding was Hail by definition means strong. So I love that that goes to the pull-up bar, the workouts, the recovery of, you know, uh, pushing yourself. But the hail by design, the letters stand for healthy, accountable, living, and joy. And that's that little bit of a chocolate martini. That's the Easter candy we're about to have. And I think it's just a balance of, you know, helping your body restore, replenish, and recover. So our mission has really become me from uh, me just making stock and broth, bone broth for my husband to, we'd love to heal more people. Um, when you turn the letters around, it does become more of this uh, mission of getting this bone broth to more people to help them, whether it's with uh, muscle recovery or that gut um, uh, recovery in terms of um, gluten intolerances, or even just sipping it to replenish, to hydrate for the hangovers from, you know, the martinis. But so tonight we're doing uh, one of the fav uh, famous ones that kind of came into play with this COVID piece. Everybody wanted immunity and there's so many great factors to what bone broth can offer. But I think there's a tradition uh, of you can sip it and a trend that it's become more like a tea. So, you know, you just heat up one of our blocks that comes in frozen bags and they're all portioned out and you can heat up a block, which is one cup and sip it in your mug, like your coffee, replace that second cup of coffee or that um, tea at night. But tonight I'm cooking up the immunity chicken soup and it's super easy, lots of ingredients that you should have. I made it more of like a um, Easter basket with some color, some green, yellow, pink, some orange. Um, my second grader already went Easter egg um, hunting, so I kind of wanted to mimic her basket. And we start with either a coconut oil, like a high temp oil, or um, and coconut oil carries great benefits. So you can start with an organic coconut oil, or I love to use avocado oil with my cooking. So a little um, stir of the pan for your avocado oil. This is also local. This is Stonewall Kitchen up in my favorite place, Wells, Maine. Um, I start with heating up that oil and then you just stick with the traditional, I know in Trader Joe's you can get it, mirepoix that's already chopped for you. Um, I just pre-chopped tonight um, an organic onion, spring onion, some celery and some carrot. Again, very festive, very Easter-ish. Um, and I'm gonna save a few of these carrots for my daughter to put out for the Easter bunny. So you put in your mirepoix, um, onions, carrots, and celery, and just cook that down so it gets soft and translucent. And then you want to season it. And I wanted to share with you some of my favorites. Uh, locally, Duxbury Saltworks. Uh, we actually use it in our broth right over in Duxbury Bay, um, like triple filtered. We call it fancy salt in our house because you can like see the flakes. When I met the owner, Lily, she was like trucking into that ocean, taking it out and actually boiling it down in our, um, in our house in Duxbury. And now she's over at Island Creek Oysters um, in that facility. So great salt. So I'd salt my, um, my veggies pretty generously with some salt and some cracked pepper. Or my other favorite is Hippie Pilgrim. She's out of Halifax, another farmer's market friend. This is like a garlic, salt, and pepper um, um, little mix. She's got some great seasonings. So this has the black pepper in it. Um, and also has some garlic, but the recipe calls for some crushed garlic, trick of mine. You can use the Trader Joe's or some actually cubed up garlic. One cube is actually um, one clove. So I think this recipe calls out for two. So I'll pop in two cloves of garlic, just making sure we're not burning the garlic. And then once that kind of cooks down with the, the veggies, we can give it a, a a nice little stir and it's starting to smell really good and fragrant. 
So that's when we have the easy stuff. Um, we want to start uh, with rotisserie chicken. I probably did um, a full rotisserie chicken in our house. It's a, it's a bit of an obsession that I always have one in the house for a quick cook, quick meal. And that bone broth is going to elevate the feeling of it being low and slow cooked all day. So this is a couple cups of rotisserie chicken. I like it uh, bigger, but you can chop it, you can chunk it, you can shred it. And I add that right in so it starts to get um, kind of in with the veggies. And then the secret ingredients. Here's where you either can keep it traditional for someone like my second grader. I might pull out a little bit of the regular soup um, without the spice. But the spices that uh, the immunity soup calls for is a titch of thyme um, and a bit of curry. So I'm loving, I'm definitely into curry these days. I usually toast it up with um, on top of some cauliflower for this recipe as well. And instead of adding a noodle, I actually blend um, ro roasted cauliflower that has some um, um, curry on top. But for tonight, we're just gonna add the curry right in, let that toast in with the veggies and the chicken, a little bit of thyme, and then it really starts to smell good. I love the smell of curry. And if you're not, curry's not your jam, you just um, can omit. And if thyme's not your jam, there's a nice poultry seasoning that you can uh, put a pinch in, which has that sage, more of that like Thanksgiving um, poultry feel. So that are, those are the spices. And talk about secret ingredient. This is bringing in that Easter color. Um, I have, happen to have a green apple on hand. You could use a red apple, but it's, some, it's like a play on number one um, immunity. So you're adding a, a fruit, you're adding vegetables. You're adding broth, which has that immunity piece and the collagen and um, the trace minerals from the, the salt and the electrolytes. So it hydrates and that's the whole chicken soup for your soul. Um, Making you feel good when your grandmother said have some chicken soup. But this is the secret ingredient, a green apple right in. The play on that is like a butternut squash soup does really well with an apple in it. Um, but so does the chicken soup, especially with the curry. And now... We just um, uh, finish it off with a bit of, I've already heated up and um, put in a quart. These are frozen blocks. You can pop my um, bone broth right into the pot. I actually did the, um, put it into a quart. So I would have it, calls out for eight cups. Um, and if you don't have the hail bone broth on you or you have one bag and you wanna cut it with some healthy uh, box st uh, stock, just make sure it's low sodium and it's um, you know organic and, and sourced pretty, uh, pretty clean. So we usually just take a couple of blocks, heat it up, add it to the soup. And now you're just letting that cook down, kind of all get together, the flavors meld and let the apples soften and the carrots finish off cooking. And once that's done, you can serve it with, uh, I traditionally, my daughter loves uh, orzo. So I cook the pasta on the side. My husband and I do uh, gluten-free and really no carb uh, in terms of like a pasta. So our jam is that cauliflower I talked about, the rice cauliflower. The other um, great ingredient, this picture kind of uh, uh, on the recipe shows it is egg noodles go really well in it. It holds up well with the curry and I really feel like it gives it kind of a good thick, uh, thickness. And then the last, um, the la right at the end, right after this is kind of brought up to a good simmer, good boil for a couple minutes, then brought back down to a low to medium heat, you add, let me just get it. From the fridge, my all time favorite, it's a coconut, this is the play on curry, a coconut cream. So I love the Trader Joe's version, but you can go with any um, coconut cream in a can. You could do the coconut milk. I like the heavier fat, and I just wanna show you, it does have, you know, kind of a little bit of a thick, um, like chunk to it. So I like to add all of that. I think the recipe calls out for two cups. Um, and I just kind of go in and I already opened this so I would be able to just scoop it out. And this not only plays off the curry and the, and maybe the um, coconut oil that you added at the beginning, but it also makes the soup creamy. So now you have like a creamy chicken curry soup, which again, with all the um, benefits of the, um, the immunity piece that the broth and the, um, the coconut and the curry and the flavor of the apple, all that bring together to this soup to make it a, a immunity boosting soup. So that is my soup um, for your Easter holiday when you're busy making all the other indulgent foods. 
Excellent job. That looks delicious. That's I can't awesome. wait to try it. Yep. That's funny. We buy some of the same stuff. I have the garlic. I'm at Trader Joe's every Thursday, typically. And I have the avocado oil, but it's not um, Stonewall Kitchen. It's the Trader Joe's avocado. And I use their organic um, uh, coconut oil as well. So And coconut aminos. That's my other go-to. Their coconut aminos. Is yes, we have that. We use that in place of soy sauce. Just yes. Because, yes, exactly. So... It's funny. So we'll, I'll meet you at Trader Joe's sometime, I'm sure. So My favorite place. <laughs> so we had uh, one comment that said, uh, holy professional. So uh, nice job. Very nice job. So we really appreciate you coming on to the show. And, uh, and in happy, uh, happy Easter. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, that was excellent. That was really good. Really Mike was that. actually supposed to make that for dinner, but he, uh, um, I had a busy day, and <laughs> then I um, had some other things. So he was um, taking a vacation day from uh, from having to cook on Friday's. Yeah, Carmel. I was actually very excited <laughs> about it. I really was. I was like, yes, I don't have to cook anything. Yeah, it's like, yeah. goes, oh, don't you want to make that tonight? So I have the recipe right here, and I am going to. Uh, make this tomorrow, and uh, Melissa was kind enough to give us uh, some of the bone broth. And so. we uh, we tried some of it uh, before the show. I just heated up. I actually just love to drink drink it, drink just, it warm, you know, if I uh, for a, a snack, and it was delicious. Yes, it's kind so, of like a tea. Just drink it out of a coffee cup is what we did today. So so next, I am going to do, um, and if we'll we'll see how long this takes. I, I don't like to go past thirty minutes. So the first cocktail I'm going to make is the cream egg. Now, one of the things when I was looking at eat for Easter cocktails, I uh, I read about Advocate. Now, I'm just gonna switch it onto this show show and stream here camera so you can see how it's spelled. So, what Advocate is, they they refer to it as the Dutch um, eggnog. So it is it is made with egg. But it is actually, instead of putting any, there's no cream in it. What is done is the eggs are actually um, made in like a, um, a curry. I mean, a curry. A, sorry. I was thinking, man, that curry sounds so good in that soup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a custard. The eggs are made in, into a custard. So, and, you know, I went out and bought this. We, we were, uh, and we we're giving it away to some people that we thought might make them because because you don't need a lot in these cocktails. It is it is kind of sweet, but it is uh, it's delicious. What's Mike Sleeper have to say? Hello, Mike. Hello, neighbor. So uh, so I'm going to start with the cream egg. So this is this is kind of a take off the uh, Cadbury egg, and to do this cocktail. Um, you actually melt a, I melted, um, let me just turn this other camera on, sorry. I, I just put some dark chocolate, it was really just one bar of dark chocolate uh, into the microwave and, you know, I just dipped the rim of the glass and then this glass, again, was, was in the freezer so it's chill. Um, and then for the garnish, you actually refrigerate, you refrigerate a Cadbury egg and you cut it in half and then you put a skewer through, skewer through it. And I will say this was a process. I went through a couple Cadbury eggs uh, because um, you, they, because the, uh, the chocolate is so hard from being in the refrigerator, I just kind of, I ended up, I was using a metal, um, pick and it was just breaking everything. So then I, uh, I ended up just using one of our long wooden skewers and just uh, uh, twisted it in. Um, and I won't say what I did with the, you know, the destroyed egg products, but uh, so, so that is, so we have our garnish glass. We have our uh, eggs prepared for their garnish. And this is, this calls for an ounce and a half of vanilla vodka. Now I do not have vanilla vodka, so what I'm going what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an ounce and a half of regular vodka, 
And then one of the things that we absolutely, that I absolutely love is this Madagascar vanilla bean paste. It is so much better, when you're baking or cooking, it is so much better to put this bean paste in than it is vanilla. So it's it's basically there's there's no alcohol in it. It does need to be refrigerated, but it's in a, it's in water and sugar, and and it's great for cocktails. So I am just going to take an eighth of a teaspoon of this. I don't want to. It is there because there is sugar in it. It is a little sweet, but um, I'm going to cut back a little bit on the uh, the vanilla uh, um, the the cream to cocoa. I love this stuff when I cook um, and use this because it, it you truly taste the vanilla because when you use like vanilla extract out of a little jar, it, it always seems like the alcohol that it's in overwhelms the flavor of the vanilla. This is like chewing on a, a vanilla bean it's, or whatever. It's, it's, it's it is just, so good. It is it's super really good. good. It's, it's, that ranks up there with the Luxardo cheers. Because I will say it's about the same price as the Luxardo cherries. Because, about twenty bucks. Yeah, this little <laughs> this little jar, but it, a little goes a long, long way. Long way, yes. So exactly. uh, we have we we've we had it always, since nineteen seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. No. So now I am going to use the liquor forty three. This is uh, kind of a, a distinct liquor in my mind. In my opinion, again, it tastes like vanilla. That's a half an ounce of that. Oh, I should. Throw up the recipe. Sorry, honey, when I throw up the recipe, it's going to cut you off so you can stand, oh, no. stand behind me if you'd like. Okay, so it's a half an ounce of, why don't you, you can stand closer. A half an ounce of, of the liquor 43, and we're going to do a half an ounce again of the cream de cocoa. This recipe also calls for uh, the Dutch white, but again, as I said, I don't have that. And then I'm going to do a half an ounce of the Advocate. The Advocate sounds like the name of a bar or a drink versus a liqueur. And then this drink calls for half and half, half, and half cream. So this is a cream drink. That's why the, the next drink I'm going to make no, actually, I'm not going to have time because I was going to make the uh, the Angels Advocate, which also uses the Advocate, but it uses lemon juice instead of um, it uses lemon juice, so it's not in gin, so it's not near as sweet. Do you guys want her to make that drink? Should she make it? No. Thumbs up. Yes. Thumbs up. I don't like making the show too long. I don't want I don't want to bore people. When you shake, people are not bored. Let me just tie this and let's just see what we got here. Dory says, be still my heart. Jim says you can use a dedicated drill bit. You're, you, you know what? I actually thought of getting the drill bit out. You're, you are exactly right. That's what I should have done. But that would have that would have required like I, I really I do this like five minutes before the show starts. So you're right. I should have. <laughs> and Kelly Dwight says power tool dessert follows. drink. Yeah, that's what I want for uh, for Christmas. A dedicated uh, drill bit for my chocolate. And, uh, and then Jim says, we love spending time with you. We love it too. Jim, I talked to your mother this week because I wanted that, uh, the, uh, the what my mother calls the Union Fair beef recipe. I wanted that recipe and she, she told me to call it. What a doll. She is such a sweetheart. And I am going to, we are going to make that and I'm going to feature that on uh, one of the Friesies Corner Bars because um, that... Uh, brown roast beef, it's not a New England thing. You can't find it up here, and it is delicious. We're making like, it after the show. I yeah. already got the, the chuck roast that she recommended today. Yep. So, uh, so I'm very excited about my uh, my ground beef sandwiches. because It's definitely a Midwest thing, not a New England thing. And if we get this right tomorrow, or tonight when we make this, um, we're going to make it for one of the Friday night shows. Because it's such an awesome. Uh, yeah. Cheers! Meal. I'm gonna taste this. 
And then I will, I'll go ahead and make the, uh, I'll make the advocate. So I don't want to stick around and watch. So the, um, the angel's advocate, I actually, this cream egg cocktail is really good. But I think as you guys all know, and as I've said a million times before, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the sweet cocktail. And so the fact that we add lemon juice to this, you know, in, in my opinion, really balances the sweetness. This is a much, a much more balanced drink. So it is the one that I actually recommend. Well, first off, because it has gin in it. Which is, and let me throw the recipe up here. Okay, so it has dry gin, an ounce and a half of dry gin. And now this only, co this calls for a teaspoon, a teaspoon of the Advocate liquor. So again, you know, we're not, uh, not going too sweet, but I will say this is also one that, you know, I don't think I'd go out and buy the Advocate to make it unless you were making it for Easter for, you know, a, a group of people. And if you're local, come by, we'll give you some. Yes, we have Advocate. <laughs> if you guys want Advocate, I will, we will gladly go. This, and because once it's opened, it has to be refrigerated. So, uh, so if you want we have Advocate. Little bottles ready to go if you're interested. Yep. So. And again, this calls, this calls for a half an ounce of um, vanilla, Simple syrup, I'm gonna rinse this out. Calls for a half an ounce of vanilla simple syrup. Now we don't use a lot of vanilla simple syrup. So again, what I do is I just take my uh, my little one eighth teaspoon and I'm gonna put that in the jigger. And then I'm gonna pour my regular simple syrup, which we always have in the refrigerator, on top of that. So that is gonna give me my what did I say? Half an ounce? Yeah, I don't know. You don't know. You're supposed to be keeping track of me. Half ounce. Yeah, that will give me my half an ounce of. Are you even in the picture? I gotta put you. No, I gotta get that recipe done. That's all right. Leave it up. No, I don't need no, to be in the photo. I'd like you to be in the photo. That's a half an ounce of the vanilla simple syrup, and then we take two-thirds of an ounce of the fresh squeezed lemon. Now, last weekend... Two-thirds. Yes, I know, two-thirds. <laughs> this is a British recipe. They always uh, they always make things a little little hard. Because um, typically they're, they're converting millimeters to ounces. So last weekend, Mike and I recorded a whole show on the whole results of our citrus experiment. And it didn't record. I don't know what was wrong, what we did wrong, but it didn't record. So I will spend, I wrote, I wrote up a whole blog post on the results. So that's on Fizey's Corner Bar. But I, I do want to, uh, uh, hopefully next week we'll have time and I can, I can talk about uh, that. Shake it, oh, baby, shake it. I forgot the bitters. Oh my gosh. This calls for cardamom bitter, which is, um, we use this uh, aromatic bitters, but if you don't have an aromatic bitter, you can always use cardamom seed or, or uh, something, um, yeah, that or you can. Yeah. That's the bitter. Yeah, you'll never be able to read that. Never mind. That's, that's the bitter, bitter truth. The I bitter actually, truth, yes. Off of Amazon.com, you get five bottles for nineteen dollars ninety five ninety nine. I actually bought. There's two different packs. I, I bought. I like the Travelers pack. Um, it's just these little bitters bottles that you can take with you on on various trips. So this is a double strain cocktail, by the way. Yeah. Um, because there's lemon juice in it, and then I am going to garnish this with. A piece of citrus that's cut into a cross. Because it's Good it. Friday. Because well, it's Good Friday, and it's an angel's advocate. So cheers. 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 Just, I don't want to. But anyway, cheers. <laughs> no, I'll drink that. I was okay. gonna say, take a sip. Cheers. I, I love you. Jeez, so many demands. Mm. 
This is really good. That's the one I wanted to taste. So. Well, that's the one he wants, which is mine. So, okay. So, that's what right, else do yours. we have? Okay. So, um, I have a couple of things I'd like to mention. Let me just say, if there's comments, balance is those. the key with all drinks. It will get you a return customers to the bar. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. So, okay, but we do need to wrap it up. Yeah, we do. Um, we're building. Um, our April calendar going, you know, for our Friday night show. So if there's suggestions that you guys would like to see us do in terms of um, food, cocktails, things you'd like us to talk about, we'd be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is build a four week out calendar and then we try to adhere to that in terms of cocktails and meals. We have, you know, I built a 12 week calendar and we adhered to maybe four shows. So don't believe them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't believe a word. No, we just talked the other day how we need to get. We well, need to get. Um, we said we needed to do that. Like, well, like it was some epiphany. You know what we need to do, Shannon? And I was like, oh, you mean the 12 week travel calendar I put together? But we're not traveling all the time. So um, we, are, we are going to be traveling and we will do on the road shows. But um, for the month of April, though, we are trying to build something that. Um, each week we have a consistent yeah. cocktail menu. Yeah. But we, if we you do. guys do have some suggestions or cocktails you'd like to see us do, you know, we're very open to it. Um, last yeah. week I started to talk about the difference between botanicals and dry gins. So we're actually going to do a gin um, Friday night show. That's yeah, actually, next week we'll do gin and I'll do citrus because one of the things we'll do, we'll do a gimlet and we can talk about that because gin and citrus goes really yeah. well. Yeah, and we were never gin fans until we kind of discovered all the okay. really well, good cocktails. Don't give away too much of your I'm gin not story. going to give Okay, away. and then we have, oh, Mike Sleeper says fiddleheads. Actually, that's, yes, that fiddlehead season's coming. That would be good to do something with Mike, are you good at making that? Because we would love to have you come on and, um, do that, and then I don't have to cook. Well, thank you, everyone. All right, good night, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for joining us. See ya. Bye-bye.